This channel just crossed 200,000 subscribers and I am absolutely blown away. I couldn't even believe it when we hit 10,000 subscribers and then 100,000 subscribers and now 200,000 subscribers. I just wanna say from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for being here. You know, I'm just happy to be part of this awesome mushroom community and I feel like we are just getting started. There's still so much to learn, so much to explore and so much to share all about the magic of mushrooms. But today I thought it'd be fun as a 200,000 subscriber special to jump into the channel, go review some of the older videos and perhaps add some commentary that might be missing context or just things that maybe my thoughts have changed on over the years. So yeah, this should be a different kind of a video, but let's jump into the channel and uh, let's get going. All right, so here's the channel. This is still gonna blow me away forever to see that 200,000. Absolutely crazy. This is Tegan, by the way. I'm usually the person on the channel, but uh, Tegan is a huge part of Fresh Cap. So she's in a lot of our live stuff, but yeah, we gotta get Tegan on the channel more. So let's go see the very first ever video four years ago, growing mushrooms on sawdust. Wow, lots changed since then. Look at that logo. That was the OG logo, weird to see. I did a lot of stuff uh, without a tripod, obviously, just holding the camera like this. Still kind of do that, but I had I didn't use my phone. I just had this big heavy camera and I had to do a bunch of takes. My arm got tired. <laughs> okay, I still use the substrate recipe a lot, actually. It's really good. It's just hardwood fuel pellets and I use some bran right there and I use some water. But if you are growing oysters, I found a better substrate recipe. It's called the master's mix. We do have an article on it. If you, if you Google fresh cat master's mix, you can go look it up. But yeah, the substrate recipe is still one of the best. Still works really, really well. Oh, the filter patch. That's something I should probably clear up to be honest. Okay, let's go find that. So the filter sleeve, this is one of the most commonly asked questions that we got at Fresh Cap for anything. And the whole idea, the whole concept with this was after you sterilize a bag, once it cools down, it will draw in air, right? And if it draws in that air that's contaminated, well, then it's gonna contaminate your fruiting block. So the whole idea with the filter sleeve is to filter any of that air that gets drawn into the bag when it's cooling down. So you just kind of slide it in there and then I would zigzag fold the bag over and it works. But here's the thing, shortly after I recorded this video, I stopped using the filter sleeve thing and I never looked back. I've never used it again once since and never had had any problems with contamination. So really you don't need to do that. It's just like kind of an extra step. We've had so many questions about it and I'm happy to be able to answer now. Just don't worry about it. Just skip that step altogether. Forget I ever said anything about a filter sleeve. Just fold the bag over, it'll be fine. But yeah, wow, four years ago. You know what, like when I first uploaded that first video, I didn't think anybody would watch it. I didn't think anybody would uh, pay attention whatsoever. Just kind of did it for fun. 209,000 views. Hopefully a lot of people are getting some, growing some mushrooms with that recipe. Still works really well. Growing mushrooms on straw. God, I really needed to get a tripod. So much close up action. So this video is all about obviously growing mushrooms on straw and it's still one of the best ways to grow mushrooms, to be honest. I still love doing this. You basically take some straw, like shows in the video here, and you chop it all up, you pasteurize it, and then you stuff it all into a bag and you add your mycelium and you can grow mushrooms. And one of the best ways to do that is just growing it outside. There's Otis running around. You grow these mushrooms outside and it's super low effort. You can produce these huge clusters of mushrooms and it doesn't take all that much work. Now this video was a lot of work because I ended up chopping up the straw with a whipper snipper and then pasteurizing it in this giant 55 gallon drum and then stuffing the bag. It was a lot of work, but there's lots of other ways you can do it. You don't need to use a big drum. You can just do it in a big tote with hot water. There's Nova sniffing the straw. The one comment I got on this video for sure, a lot of people were annoyed at the music. I'm sorry about that. When I edited these videos, I was wearing headphones. I couldn't tell how annoying music was. <laughs> Trying to watch it back now, I realize it's kind of distracting. So I'm sorry. Hopefully it's gotten better. Adding the spawn. So you don't have to do it this way. I think when I did it this way, I broke it all up and I mixed it with the straw and then I stuffed the bag all together. But you can kind of do it at the same time. You can add the straw and then add the spawn and then add the straw and do these layers. But this way works really well too. Let's go see how these mushrooms turned out. Look at this, an ad. I think I'm in this ad. Hey, there I am. Isn't that fun? Okay, enough of that. Oh gosh, again, again with the camera. So that log, I eventually uh, just brought it outside to grow it. Look at that. Beautiful oyster mushrooms. 
Now, growing oyster mushrooms outside like this is awesome, but one of the things you gotta worry about is the bugs. Like if I leave these too long, the bugs get in there and they lay their eggs and eventually they just eat the mushrooms and there's nothing you can do about it. So you gotta harvest it soon enough, but we got a really good harvest off this log. This, this method works awesome. For anybody that wants to grow mushrooms, using the poly tubing and the straw and the oyster spawn, it works really good. You get these big, beautiful clusters of mushrooms. One of the things that maybe isn't as obvious on all the YouTube channel is uh, the number of times that things don't work and I screw up. Oh my gosh. Definitely learned how to grow mushrooms through a lot of trial and error. And I would say like more than half of the things I tried to do didn't work. And I have like endless B-roll of videos that I was gonna make that just never worked out. Trying to grow mushrooms in crazy different ways. You're doing these weird, wacky things outside. I'm sure that's the same with all YouTubers. <laughs> probably have all these crazy ideas and not everything pans out, so it doesn't always make it. Okay, this I gotta show you, growing reishi mushrooms. So this video, for some crazy reason, uh, YouTube decided to flag it as requiring age verification. So gotta be over 18 to watch somebody grow reishi mushrooms for some reason. Man, I'm really glad I figured out how to get a tripod. But anyways, I even appealed this decision with YouTube for whatever reason, and they decided to keep the video as age verification required. Oh, I remember this. When I was cutting these oysters off the block, I sliced my finger open so freaking bad, and I bled absolutely everywhere. You can see the band-aid, maybe it was my thumb. Of course, I didn't show that part, but when you're cutting reishi mushroom, it is super tenacious, okay? Be careful not to slice your thumb open. Maybe that's why this video is age verified. Maybe they knew I injured myself. <laughs> By the way, I was just looking at some of the stats before this. Almost 12 million views on the channel, which is crazy. Uh, to think how many people are watching mushrooms. When I first started this, I had no idea, right? Actually, to tell you a little side note, it was the same when we started the site, freshcatmushrooms.com. I was like blogging about mushrooms and blogging about teaching people how to grow mushrooms. And I didn't think anybody was actually reading it. But at the same time, I was paying like maybe 10 or 15, $20 a month for hosting fees for the website. And I thought this is kind of a waste. I'm just gonna delete the site. And I was this close, literally this close from deleting freshcatmushrooms.com. And instead of doing that, I actually looked at some of the analytics. I was blown away by how many people were actually reading and sharing and you know learning how to grow mushrooms. So really glad I didn't delete the site, but just really excited that there's such an awesome mushroom community to connect with. Now, of course, there's tons of amazing content creators on YouTube and, and doing blogs on TikTok and Instagram, all that kind of stuff. But when we first started Fresh Cap, there really wasn't a lot of people doing mushroom content. You had to go to the shroomery to learn how to grow mushrooms. So that's why I was so surprised that people were actually going to the, the site, but again, I'm glad I didn't delete it. I'm glad I started doing videos as well because here we are and I get to share all that awesome stuff with you guys. The laminar flow hood video. This is another thing that's really cool. I put this laminar flow hood video out there with the design plans. You know, obviously to think maybe one or two people might find it useful and build their own laminar flow hood. The number of flow hoods that I see out in the world now that are exactly like this is just absolutely mind blowing. It's, it's crazy to think how many more laminar flow hoods are in the world because of this video. And it's really cool. This flow hood works really, really well. I still use it like basically every day. If you don't know what a laminar flow hood is, it's a thing you can build that has a clean stream of air and allows you to do all sorts of mycological work in front of it and just makes the whole process of growing mushrooms a lot easier. This is designed and built with the help of Jeff, who's in the video here, brother-in-law. He helped me design this thing. 137,000 views, that's not bad, not bad. What video has the most views? Oh, obviously the video that has the most views is this how to grow mushrooms in a five gallon bucket video. This was absolutely crazy. I wasn't gonna do this video. I actually wasn't even gonna make it, but I had this spawn and we were moving and I was like, screw it, I'll make this video. And it's like the only video that actually went kind of like semi-viral. And if you look through the comments, there was tons of people who watched this video that had no idea that they had any interest in growing mushrooms. So YouTube was just like kind of throwing it at them. And now people are growing mushrooms because of it, which is super cool. So as much as I like to think how many more lavender flow hoods are in the world, it's even crazier to think how many more oyster mushrooms are in the world because of this video because this is a super simple, like super succinct way to grow mushrooms. And if you can get your hands on some grain spawn and obviously a bucket and some aspen wood chips, you can grow mushrooms like this, no problem. It's definitely the easiest way to do it. You don't need any kind of special equipment or anything like that. You just basically need a bucket and some wood chips and some spawn. And, and look at that, look at those mushrooms. Wow, that's crazy, right? Really awesome. One big advertisement for the Home Depot. You can also use a Canadian tire bucket. There's a lot of comments about the food grade buckets. 
pretty sure Home Depot buckets are food grade though. Somebody might prove me wrong. This is the other thing I wanted to point out in this video. It's not a bear in the background. That was one of the main comments I got was, oh my gosh, there's a bear in the background. That's my dog Otis. He's taking a poop. And I think my dog Nova makes an appearance sometime here pretty quick. Anytime I'm getting ready to film a video or getting ready to do something with a camera, the dogs somehow know it and they just, they want your attention. See, there's your Frisbee. She kept jabbing it at me the whole time I was trying to record and I eventually did play with her. There she is. They're in probably most of the videos at some point in time. So this bucket turned out really well and this video turned out way, way, way better than I thought it would because again, it went semi-viral. I think 2.5 million views, which is crazy. The entire channel now has almost 12 million views, but this video got 2.5 million views and I saw it everywhere. And the other crazy thing too is all over social media now, all over the place I see this bucket method and a lot of people using it and growing mushrooms because of it, which is super cool. So one question I should answer, a lot of people ask, hey, can you grow different types of mushrooms using this method? And absolutely you can. I haven't grown lion's mane using this method, but absolutely you can grow lion's mane, you can grow different types of oysters. The only oyster that I don't think would work that well is something Something like a king oyster but any type of oyster mushroom other than that uh, lion's mane you know, all sorts of mushrooms you can grow using this bucket method it works really really well what's the second most watched video growing mushrooms in bottles so we went through a few logo changes already that was the second logo i feel like we're on to the final one now this one it's better Look at that, some enoki mushrooms. So the cool thing about the bottle method is you can use some reusable bottles and it works really, really well, especially for enoki, but for all sorts of oyster mushrooms and all sorts of different types of mushrooms. One of the cool things in this video is the pictures. These pictures are from Mycopia mushrooms in Sebastopol, California. And they have an amazing facility down there where they're growing all sorts of different gourmet mushrooms using this bottle method and everything is totally mechanized. We do have an article on it, but let's see if I can show a little more Everything is totally mechanized. So this is a machine that basically pulls the substrate out after it's done so they can just reuse those bottles. And they have machines that automatically inoculate the bottles and they have machines that do all sorts of stuff. So everything's mechanized and they can produce insane amounts of mushrooms using this bottle technique, which is really cool. There's some king oyster mushrooms that they were growing there, some maitake mushrooms that they were growing there. This is all part of a big trip me and Tegan got to do. We went, hey, there I am, uh, the, the Mako mushrooms, where we got to go around and check out all these super cool mushroom farms all over the US. It was pretty, pretty awesome stuff and Mycopia was just one of them. So we used to do Fresh Cap Friday Live, where we would go live every Friday, uh, me and Tegan, and quite often we would bring guests. This is one of the things I really think we should bring back because again, there's so many amazing people in the mushroom community that are great to talk to and can add so much to the space and we could bring them onto the channel. So if there's anybody you know that we might want to bring on and interview, let, let me know, because that'd be pretty cool. But yeah, we interviewed Eric Myers, uh, Adam Harriton from Learning Land, who also has an awesome YouTube channel, uh, which you should check out, it's definitely bigger than ours. Uh, and he does a lot of cool mushroom foraging stuff. I think he has a course as well, but Adam Harriton, definitely cool. Uh, this was Andrew from Smallhold. Very cool guy. They're making like these mushroom fruiting chambers for restaurants and Whole Foods and stuff like that. It's very similar to the Mela actually, but uh, it's, it's for larger scale. We interviewed Daniel Rays from the Austin Mycological Society, very cool. And uh, Adam Sainer from Grow Cycle who also has a YouTube channel uh, and they're doing some really cool stuff. So yeah, that's something I definitely wanna bring back. We don't go live on YouTube that often, but maybe it'd be cool, especially if we can bring some other cool guests on. These are probably two of my favorite videos too, the PF Tech videos. They definitely get a lot of attention. Perfect, Elm Oysters, this is what I'm here for, right? Everybody grows Elm Oysters with the PF Tech, obviously. Yeah, this is one of those videos where I wasn't 100% sure how well it would work out growing Elm Oysters using this method but I was dedicated to getting the video out and uh, very luckily it did work and it worked really well and I was able to get that out. People seem to enjoy it. So I made this video, I inoculated it and I had them colonizing and I published the video even not knowing that, you know, not knowing how well it was gonna work out in the end. I was just kind of like hoping that it would actually work out, but it did, which is, Quite often the case. I mean, mushrooms, uh, especially with the PF Tech and stuff like that, you know, you know it's gonna work. A lot of the other crazy experiments, it didn't work. I wasn't so sure, but the PF Tech really does. Okay, well, I think that's kind of it. I don't wanna like watch some of the newer videos because well, I guess you can just go watch them. But what I do wanna reiterate is how grateful uh, I am that you are here watching these videos and how awesome the mushroom community is. But what I'd really like to know from you is what do you want the future of this channel to look like? What kind of content do you wanna see? What kind of mushroom things are you most excited to learn about 
and I'd love to try and bring that to you. So thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for being part of the Fresh Cat family in this community, and uh, we'll catch you in the next videos.